Hey, it's Dave and Evelyn from The Camera Store, and today we're talking about the Nikon ZF. Today, Dave and I are going to give our hands-on first impressions of the Nikon ZF. So. so it is a very cool retro style camera, and I brought along, just for reference, a Nikon FM2, which I think the Nikon ZF is paying homage to as far as the controls and layouts go. Yeah, definitely some inspiration here. And so we're going to get into the design of this camera, who we think it's for, and then some of the technical features. Let's start with the design of this camera because of course the Nikon ZF is all about style and it has a lot of kind of high-end technical features as well. And so let's talk about how they've balanced those two things together. I mean, the old school cameras like the FM2, you would look at the top dial and you look at all your settings and make your adjustments. Nikon did it with the D series with the DF, right? But that camera felt a bit chunky. Then quite, didn't quite, quite, hit. quite hit it with that one. But they've done a great job with this one. I mean, it just looks like, oh, this is this from this decade or is it from like four decades ago? It's pretty. Yeah. Well, this girl right here loves styles. I love that feel of interacting with the camera. That experience is really nice. And I think Nikon did a very good job. Everything has a good quality feel to it, I'm finding. And the camera is a substantial weight as well. It doesn't feel too lightweight to me. It's 630 grams. So it, it feels solid in my hands. And I do like when you are using these dials there, they do lock if you want to control the those settings through the dials on the camera rather than the actual knobs you certainly can lock them in and work it that way but you do have the option to kind of have that old school experience yeah we also like the little touches like the threaded shutter button that's a nice touch it looks cool it kind of has a nice feel to it and I like the little window as well where you can digitally see your f-stop while the camera is turned on and it just kind of gives like that overall vintage aesthetic uh, 100% and certainly has a really good styling to it and this is by far Nikon's best retro style camera. Yeah, now in terms of more of the modern side of things, we do have a fully articulating screen and we also have a 3.69 million dot electronic viewfinder. So this gives you that exposure preview that we love about mirrorless cameras. Another cool feature I like that's underneath the shutter speed button here is the ability to go from your video to stills mode, but one little click over and you're in black and white mode. Very simple, but I really kind of like that. It's neat. And when we start talking about image quality and the look of the photos that came out of this camera, I think it definitely needs to be mentioned that their black and white mode is awesome. It does take on the look of the profile that you were in last for JPEGs, but you can still shoot raw to your backup memory card. And that brings us to the <laughs> media and battery on this camera. So if you haven't heard the news already, yes, it has two card slots. So having kind of like a mid-range full frame camera, two card slots, awesome. However, there's a little bit of an argument on whether they made the right choice here. So we have an SD UHS-2 memory card slot, and then for something different, we also have a micro SD card, one of those little teeny cards as your backup. What do yeah. you think, Dave? You're just shaking your head over here already. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan. I think the vast majority of people using this camera are only gonna use a single SD card anyways. And I don't know yeah. if you want redundancy or some backup, why couldn't they just fit in an extra SD card? I mean, you're telling me the engineers couldn't figure out a way to make that happen? You know what, I'm gonna back them up because I think they made a good compromise to maintain the sleek lines on this camera, keeping it very small. I mean, if you look where that battery door is, where those slots are, it's a tight space. So you would have had to make the grip a lot bulkier in order to fit another one and let me tell you that there's not a lot of limitations I mean you still have all of the video capabilities for stills you can still shoot everything you can st still shoot fast the only small limitation that you might have is in buffer depth when you're actually shooting if you have a slower micro SD card in that slot yeah I, I still claim most people only use it with a single card those little micro SD cards they're so easy to lose and flip out. Yeah, I mean, I could see like leaving it in the camera and just having it as like a pure backup option. So again, I think that it was a good compromise. We want to know what you guys think because Dave and I truly do not agree on this feature. <laughs> now there's a lot more to this camera than just very cool retro styling. And it's when you get into the guts of this camera here. Now it shares the same processor found in the Z8, which is great because it gives us a lot of power to work with, especially when it comes to autofocus. 
Yeah, and this is paired with a 24 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor. It's not a stacked sensor, but when it's combined with this processing power, it gives us a lot more functionality than we saw in the Z6 II. So for example, the autofocus is worlds better. We're getting to take advantage of the deep learning. There's nine different profiles, so you can shoot things like animals, people, birds, planes, dogs, cats, and it's going to do an excellent job of tracking. You also have that 3D tracking and video, which is very important. And so so with this processing power, we're getting a lot more of that advanced functionality that we saw in like the pro cameras, the Z8, which is like double the price of this. So a lot of great functionality here. Yeah, it's really nice to see that technology trickle down into a more affordable body and a very cool looking body. Yeah, and I like the files that come out of Nikon's full frame 24 megapixel sensor. I think the color is really good. You get nice contrasty look, especially in the JPEGs right out of camera. There's not a lot of tweaking that's involved. And then of course, when you nail the focus, that's also very satisfying. And I have to say there's an interesting feature here that we haven't seen on Nikon before where they have some manual focusing assist tools. So this actually takes advantage of the face and eye detection and allows you to punch in easily on your subject's eye so that you can really nail focus manually. So again, aiding to that more like retro experience if you wanna use the camera, say in black and white, manual focus gives you some tools to really nail that. Yeah, it makes it sort of as retro as possible and the functionality of it. Yeah. Now, and also forget that that is a stabilized sensor, which is very cool. And it does have a very cool little feature that it actually links the stabilization to the autofocus point. So if it's up in the far right corner, for instance, it's certainly going to try and adjust its stabilization to best accommodate that. Well, not only that, Dave, but we also have eight stops of in-body image stabilization. So both on the photo side and video, this again is going to give you that additional functionality. And it also has a pixel shift option. So you can put this on a tripod and and you can get up to a 96 megapixel image. So you can shoot that in the camera, put it in processing software, and you're gonna have these like massive, gorgeous, highly detailed images. And then from an image quality standpoint, the 24 megapixel files are really easy to work with. I find the JPEGs out of camera have a nice contrasty look to them. I don't often have to adjust skin tones too much. And then that monochrome mode that you can do with a flick of a switch right into black and white gives you some nice options too. So you have the different profiles, and when you switch on, the black and white mode, it will go to the last profile you used. I think the black and white images that are coming out of this Nikon camera are fantastic. And I love that you can just turn that on with the flick of a switch. Yeah, I mean, if I'm gonna shoot the black and white though, I am gonna shoot raw plus the black and white. Yeah. I mean, just in case- To, I that, wanna... to that second uh, memory card, Dave? No, 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 all in the same card, all in the same card, <laughs> one card. It's a one card world for me with this camera. <laughs> Now this camera is not one I would like pick up first if I want to shoot sports exclusively or birds in flight. I don't find the ergonomics quite suit what I would like for that. No, but you can. You, you like if this can. is your second body, you can still do everything that that you can with your Z8. No, 100%. Although, you know, we give up some of the frame rate. I mean, this does 14 frames per second with mechanical shutter. That you can not shoot faster, but there's some rolling shutter potential issue with this. this is yeah, an not older the sensor. fastest scanning sensor, that's for sure. Some jello effect issues. No. But, um, but where I see this camera coming into play more is, is the secondary camera. If you already have the luxury of owning a Z8 or a Z9, this is a fantastic little camera to go traveling with. All the same lenses all going to work with it, but you mm -hmm. have that kind of more fun play with this camera. You get to use the retro style dials. It brings you back to a time. And then flipping over to black and white, I mean, that is the, the telltale sign for me that Nikon it says, I want you to go out and have fun with this camera. Definitely. And of course, they put in like the manual focusing assist tools. I think they've done a really good job of balancing the two things. I mean, anytime you kind of have a niche style camera, you could often have some sacrifices here, but I think they've balanced out the technology side as well. So you still have a very capable camera on the still side, but then even with video, I mean, we talked about earlier, you have a dedicated record button, fully articulating screen, headphone jack, microphone jack, micro HDMI port, and it does have that eight stops of in-body image stabilization. But most importantly, this is the first non-professional Nikon camera that can do 4K 60, 422 10-bit right to the memory card. And then, you know, there's some other flexibility in the options as well. So, I mean, this camera, like you say, it could be an excellent second body for someone that does own like the Z8 or the Z9. They want something stylized that they could have as a second body, still very capable. And then if you brought this camera with you like on a trip or everyday shooting, you don't feel like you're sacrificing a lot. I think they've really balanced out those two things of having something that's like a niche styled vintage aesthetic camera that's so pretty and fun to <laughs> use, but then also having a lot of that 
high in tech. No, I mean, if you had the luxury of owning a Z8 or a Z9, those are kind of like hyper cameras, right? They're just incredibly fast, incredibly powerful working mm. tools for photography. And I think they sometimes take the fun out of photography a little bit. I think this brings the fun into photography. Yeah, and dare I say, if you're someone <laughs> that wants like that Fuji aesthetic, you don't necessarily whoa. want whoa. APS-C, <laughs> you don't want to go like medium format, you want something kind of in between. I mean, this would be a good option that would satisfy that if you're someone that just wants like a single body, full frame, a lot of great features. I think Nikon's nailed it. I'm excited about it. I want to like keep it. I don't yeah. want to send it back. If I buy this camera, I'm definitely going to get the small rig attachment to it because totally. I do find as slick as this looks, when I'm holding it for a long period of time, you certainly feel it in your hand. Like you have been sort of, you have to hang on to it. It doesn't really have that big shelf like you have with the grip. The other thing too is that if you just have to hang on to this camera with its own grip, you can't really use these dials as much as I would like to. It's not quite as comfortable. Or if you had the proper grip, there's a little more meat to the camera and you can work the thumb switch much easier. But yeah. if you're only using the retro style modes where you're using the dials on top, less of a deal like that. Now, I think though, Nikon needs to go even further with the retro style of things. I'd like to see a camera with even less features and even more functionality closer to a more primitive camera like Ooh, the FM2. Dave's appearing to those peers. <laughs> yeah, strip the video. Imagine that though, strip imagine having like just a, a, basically a digital camera that acts like a film camera. I mean, give me the film winder and everything. Even if it's a fidget spinner, I'd be happy with that. Fidget yeah. spinner? I, I think people would be quite happy to have like a very retro style functioning camera with mm. far less features and just a single card slot. Interesting. I don't know. I think it's all about balance, and I think Nikon did nail it here with this camera. Uh, but of course, I'm curious what you guys think. What are your thoughts on this? It's been kind of out in the world for a little bit of time. You've probably heard lots of opinions. We want to know yours, so let us know in the comments below. And am I making too big a deal about the micro SD card slot on here? Follow us both on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and you want to support local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.